Shalom. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone. Those are the men that taught me the truth of the Bible through the Holy Spirit. And Yahweh by Hashem Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, Brak To the elect of Israel, that's scattered across the four corners of the globe. So what we're looking at here is an article from www.rtnews.com concerning the current sanctions that the United States, America, which is Babylon the Great, actually has on Iran, okay, and how it's affecting these European countries, all right, out there in Europe. And we understand through the spirit, you know, through the Bible prophecy, you know, that's been taught by us by the Apostles of Great Millstone that um, it's these European countries alongside of America, NATO and the EU, that make up the beast, all right, the beast that we read about in the book of Revelation. And when I say the beast, I'm referring to the second beast that the Apostle John saw on the Isle of Patmos, which includes America, pursuant to what's that, um, Revelation 13 and verse 11 on down. Because in short, the Apostle John saw the Roman Empire, which he was living in, you know, he saw the Roman Empire come back all over again, all right? I mean, he actually did see a beast but the beast was symbolic for NATO, the EU, and primarily America, you know, being a part of that um, power structure, which America itself is a part of NATO, right? But it's not a part of the European um, Union, you know? It's the European Union by itself that makes up the old ancient pagan Roman Empire. You know, but today, you know, we have America and America is a part of that system, okay? And the reason why that's significant is because when you go to Revelation 17 verse 16, which Lord willing will get, you know, during the duration of this lesson. When you go into Revelation 17, verse 16, it speaks about how the ten horns shall hate the whore that sitteth upon the beast. All right. And that's basically speaking about, you know, these principal countries within Europe that have nuclear capabilities. You know, the time's going to come where they're going to hate America, which is the whore that sitteth upon the beast. And ultimately, they're going to come together alongside America's adversaries, such as Iran, such as Russia, right? And they're going to shoot and launch their missiles upon Babylon the Great, which is America. And this is why um, articles like what we're seeing here is significant. Okay, that's why it says this when we go to Habakkuk <clears throat> chapter 2. And we'll go straight to the point in verse 3. Because right now, the prophecies that we read about in the Holy Bible concerning the downfall of Esau, Edom. Esau, Edom being the so-called white man. Uh, the prophecies that we read about concerning, you know, his end, pursuant to Second Ezra chapter six verse nine, and how his stronghold, which is here in America, is going to go out. They're speaking loud and clear. Okay, so this is Habakkuk two verse three. It says, "For the vision is yet for an appointed time," and the vision is speaking about the prophecies, right? The prophecies that we read about in the Holy Bible. Now, when you go to the book of Isaiah forty two verse nine, let's get that real quick. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bashem Shai said that there's prophecies that have passed, but he's declaring new prophecies. And that's what the men of the Great Millstone are doing in these last days, beginning with the apostles and the elders and the men on down of Great Millstone and like-minded men. So this is Isaiah 42 verse 9. It says, Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And what we're declaring through the Holy Spirit, right, through the Spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashem Shai is that there's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble, right, where all hell is going to break loose upon these so-called blacks, Latinos and even Americans for your wickedness, which pretty much is going to come in the form of all out anarchy here in society in the form of race wars. You're going to have martial law. You're going to have concentration camps. You're going to have um, pestilences, disease outbreaks, right? You're going to have a form of famine. You're going to have cannibalism. You're going to have wild beasts roaming the streets. OK, it's going to be all out hell. You know, for you so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans, you Israelites, for not returning back onto your Bashmi al Shai, while you have liberty, which right now we're living in a time of grace and liberty. That's one prophecy that we're looking out for, alongside the prophecy of the mark of the beast, Revelation 13 verse 16, where Esau, Edom, is going to try his best to bring about his new world order. And at the helm of his new world order is going to be an implantable microchip, which is the mark of the beast. And that's how he plans on enslaving the masses of people. And... um. After that, we're looking out for World War Three. okay? The utter destruction of Babylon the Great and the return of our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai, with the holy angels. And uh, these things are speaking loud and clear in these days. So, again, Habakkuk 2 verse 3 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. 
the end speaking about Esau's rulership. Again, 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 9, Esau is the end of the world. The world in the eon sense, okay, in the sense of a time period, a rulership or an age. And right now we're living at the end of Esau's age to rule this world in wickedness. Pursuant to Job chapter 9 verse 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And that's the time that we're living in right now where the wicked is ruling, the so-called white man, Esau, Edom. So it says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, meaning though it seems like it's delaying, though it seems like the kingdom is delaying, the kingdom of heaven that is, which is not delaying because we have the kingdom within us, pursuant to Luke chapter 17 verse 20, all right, we have the truth. But it does seem like the, the kingdom itself, which is going to be a physical kingdom, you know, to certain brothers, it might seem like it's delaying. Um, the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, might seem like it's delaying, but it's not. The implementation of the mark of the beast, the microchip, might seem like it's delaying. World War Three, but it says, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. All right, so we can bank on the words of Yahweh Bash now Shai that all the prophecies are going to come to pass at one point or another. So let's get into this article real quick. It says, eight more EU, which EU stands for European Union, all right? Eight more EU countries join sanctions, circumventing exchange instex to trade with Iran. Because right now, America has put sanctions on Iran and it's hurting, um, you know, certain European countries that were formerly trading with Iran. And it's basically messing up their um, financial interests and their economy. Now, to begin, I want to start with this term here, instex, that I pulled up in um, Wikipedia to get more of an understanding. So, instex stands for Instrument in Support of Trade Exchanges. The Instrument in Support of Trade Exchanges, and that's where you get the acronym instex, is a European Special Purpose Vehicle established in January 2019. Its mission is to facilitate non-USD, which is United States dollar, transactions and non-SWIFT to avoid breaking US sanctions. Now, let's go to the purpose. It says, as of May 2019, the use of SPV is limited to humanitarian purposes, such as the purchase of otherwise embargoed foods or medicines. Instex has been made available to all EU member states. On the 11th of February 2019, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryovkov stated that Russia would be interested in participating in Instex. Right? And there you have that alliance between you know, Europe or these European countries alongside Russia. And we all know or should know by now that Russia is one of America's main enemies alongside Iran. Okay, So let's go back to this article. And read further down. And as you can see here, you've got a, a picture of these, you know, foreign ministers, you know, out there in Europe. And like I said, you know, all these European countries at some point during World War Three, they're going to turn against America, man. You know, and this is beautiful. It says eight EU countries have joined Instex, the mechanism to set up to trade with Iran while circumventing US sanctions, which the word circumvent means to basically go around. OK. So these countries want to go around, you know, the sanctions that the United States have put upon Iran. So let me read this again. It says, eight EU countries have joined Instex, the mechanism set up to trade with Iran while circumventing US sanctions. And another two are set to follow, according to an aid to EU High Representative Federica Mogherini. OK, it says... Apart from the three countries that initiated the creation of the mechanism, which is France, Germany and Great Britain. And those are part of the ten horns that we read about in the book of Revelation 17 verse 16. All right? Those are the principal countries out there in Europe in terms of um, their military might and their economic might. It says eight more EU member states have decided to join. Two more countries are expected to follow in their footsteps. Natalie Toshi and A2 Moregani said on Monday on the sidelines of the Valdai Club meeting in Sochi. All right, so that's what's going on out there in Europe. Now, um, before I get into the scripture, let's read this here from www.washingtonpost.com just to get a brief understanding on how, how these sanctions from America are hurting you know, these Europeans. 
So it says, while EU tries to bypass US sanctions on Iran, Trump administration amps up pressure. It says, to be a European company with links to Iran in the age of American sanctions can mean dealing with challenges that every day verge on the existential, right? Let's look up this word, existential. I believe it coincides with existence, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, ultimately, this is why these, um, these countries are going to come up against um, America in that day. Because they want to survive, you know, they want to try and survive in this world. Yeah, this is the word, I believe it's pronounced, existential, okay? And it says, relating to existence, concerned with existence, especially human existence, as viewed in the theories of, I can't even pronounce that word, I believe it's existentialism, okay? So, in other words, these um, sanctions that... um. America have got on Iran are proven to be a challenge for, you know, certain European companies out there. And it's so bad that they're worrying whether they're going to exist as a company. That's why ultimately, you know, these European countries, they're going to come together and make an agreement that, you know what, America's the the problem in this world. You know, America's that nuisance that we need to get rid of. And they're going to shoot their missiles upon America. And that's what's going to take place. It says, suppliers cut off their shipments with little warning. Phone lines get disconnected, even having the elevators repaired can be an ordeal, with service contracts cancelled. It is all related to the Trump administration's extraordinary campaign to choke off not only American trade with Iran, but European commerce with the Islamic Republic as well. Since President Trump announced in May that he was pulling the United States out of the Iran nuclear deal, European governments have sought to keep the agreement on track by keeping their companies engaged in Iranian trade. Europe last week unveiled its most dramatic step to date with the creation of a trading system that could be used to allow firms to skirt US restrictions. All right, so from there, let's go to the prophecy <clears throat> in the book of Revelation, chapter 17 and verse 16. Now it says, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. All right. And this is basically um, the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos over 2000 years ago, pretty much seeing the Roman Empire all over again, which we know today as NATO, the EU and America being at the helm of that conglomerate power, Esau's hegemony. But the Apostle John literally saw a beast. Okay, but it was symbolic for Esau's um, power structure. Okay, now these ten horns that the Apostle John is seeing here in a vision is pretty much symbolic for the EU that we have today. And um, I believe the EU started with countries such as France, Italy, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, uh, West Germany. Who, who else do you have now? Um, I believe you had Denmark, the United Kingdom, Greece and Spain. Okay, and those are the ten uh, principal countries you know that started off um the european union and ultimately it's these countries that are going to come up against america during the time of world war three okay so it says and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast again the beast being nato the eu and america it says these shall hate the whore the whore speaking about america that is sitting or at the helm you know at the forefront of this new revised roman empire okay that's the whore, Babylon the Great America. And all these countries and nations and peoples and uh, prime ministers and presidents, they're all in bed with the philosophies and so-called democracy of America. That's why America is known as the whore, okay? It says, And shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. And that's the point right there, that these countries, all right, such as Great Britain, let's go to that picture again. All right, as you can see here, you've got the likes of France, Germany, the United Kingdom, okay, which are principal countries that are a part of um, the EU, the European Union. They're all going to shoot and launch their missiles upon Babylon the Great America in that day. It says, I shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. 
verse 17, and that fire is going to come in form of these nuclear missiles. It says, For the Most High, Yahweh, Ma'ashem Yahweh have put in their hearts, meaning in their minds, to fulfill his will. And what's the will of Yahweh, Ma'ashem Yahweh to destroy Babylon the Great America for its wickedness? It says, And to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, unto the words of Yahweh, Ma'ashem Yahweh shall be fulfilled. And we're living in the time where the words of Yahweh, Ma'ashem Yahweh are being fulfilled as we speak. We're just speaking those words before they actually take place on a physical level. Okay, so Lord willing, you brothers out there were edified through the Holy Spirit. You know, I just want to do a brief update concerning that prophecy in Revelation 17, verse 16, because that's the time that we're living in, right? Where, you know, these prophecies are speaking loud and clear, and the downfall and destruction of Babylon the Great, America, is about to be destroyed, right? They're speaking loud and clear. So, all praises, honors, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Ba'ashem Rakar Kodash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Grey Millstone, and Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rakar Kodash, Brak of Thumb, to the elect of Israel. Shalom.